Hey everyone, it's Dave here and today we're starting our journey with Dimio basically. As you all know, it's releasing tomorrow, but I realized that I can't do a normal intro before the gameplay because I frankly have too much to say. And since I'm pretty excited for this release in general, I have to like organize something decent to make things work for now. So unlike all the reviews that I've done in the past in the history of this channel, I wanted to start kinda talking about the mechanics and just the gameplay trailer that Resolution Games released. And I think I'm gonna have a pretty good insight on this specifically because because I've played back in the day Dungeons and Dragons, which Dimio essentially takes an inspiration from as well. And there are certain features that I want to talk about and just clarify how things will work, or at least should work, like by preference or something. Having an experience in that specific genre is like very handy in this scenario because I know kind of what to look for, like what works and what wouldn't, and like expressing my opinions would I feel come in handy with everyone. <laughs> so we'll be basically reacting to the trailer that they put out. I'm gonna basically pausing in the moments that I want to talk about and just like kinda touch on the important mechanics that will appear in this game. Okay, so there's this whole spiel I can give you about the ancient elves and their fall from grace and the mad elven king and whatnot. But I'm thinking you just want to know how this little gem plays, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The overall goal of Demio is to get to the nethermost catacombs, confront the bloated body there, and release the trapped spirits of the undead elves. Then the realm will be saved and there will be much rejoicing. So essentially you have to fight through the levels to complete the boss fight at the end to kind of like finish the playthrough. That's pretty much the premise what it seems to be. Along the way, you will have to fight through several dusky floors of the elven necropolis. On each floor, there's a monster holding a key. That's pretty good as well, so that essentially means one of the monsters on the floor is gonna have the key. Whether it's gonna be just a common enemy or not, this is gonna be like a mini boss on the floor. And that's fun, with just searching through the rooms for chests or enemies to fight with, like a good idea of progression system if you're talking about whole gameplay fluidity in the dungeon. You need that key to open the floor exit and proceed to the next floor below. And there'll be plenty of other monsters to fight along the way. They come in all sizes, from tiny scab rats with pointy yellow teeth to big bumbling trolls with uh, less pointy teeth. Variety in monsters, that's always fun. Especially I feel like this is gonna be good if you're just talking about developing tactics for certain monsters. Because they're not gonna just auto attack you and chase you around. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have their own skills you have to learn and how to play around. So I'm pretty sure this part of the gameplay is gonna be fine. And of course, there's the undead elves and... Uh, well, you get the picture. To fight all these fiends, you have four different champions to choose from. To me this part makes no sense kinda in the RPG style because essentially you just have four classes to choose from from all the experience here. Very much limiting in terms of what you can build your team around and what dynamic it's gonna have. It's also weird that there's only one real melee kinda class. Paladin is not known as a very front heavy like champion, it's basically a tank just to protect the weak characters behind it, but looking at all those classes that all damage dealers for some reason like there's no healer there's no enchanter there's like nothing to build around like it would seem that you can just carry the game with just one character if you play well which i guess it's fair if you want to play like alone but i think in co-op it's gonna be very individualistic unless they have some synergies between each other but i definitely want to see more classes like classic warrior priest summoner just like you know classic rpg style characters also for me this is a no-brainer but you should be able to customize your champion to your own desire. Build from the ground up a character choosing the outfit, the weapons, the spells, like everything to just kinda have your own champion of your choice. That's fun in RPG, like roleplay, that's the point. The Guardian, Guardian ready. is your righteous tank. She can soak up a lot of damage and is deadly in melee. And that's weird because it's a very much fusion of Paladin of Warrior but realistically it should be separated like two classes not like everything in one for some reason. The assassin death is my profession is a sneaky backstabbing bastard and also good with traps and bombs. 
I think this is much interesting character because we're just gonna use stealth to walk around apparently to just finish off enemies. I really wonder about just the statistics or HP or anything, like tabletop is something that you really have to know things. It's not math, but it is kinda, because wanna know all the characteristics or the possibilities like percentages to know the outcome of your actions and calculate your chances of winning, that's essentially what is it about. The sorcerer I stand prepared. is of a lightning bolt flinging type. You can also use his spells for crowd management. I think Sorcerer is like the best kind of class in this overview that makes sense all together. It's basically crowd controlling mage that's gonna control the battlefield and that's straight up that. There's nothing more. Hunter. I'm ready. Well, she hunts using bow and arrow, but she can also call on beasts from the wild for aid and charm monsters and other things. Arthur is my playstyle and I'm really glad to see some summoners like from the wolves and such just companions to aid you that's essentially gonna help you in the long run if you're gonna be isolated from your teammates like far away. You can play Demio in two ways. So what do we have here? This is basically a menu that we're gonna have. There are some XP levels, like, okay. I'm very curious what's this top bar. That might be something fun. Is it just like unlockables? Like some additional features or champions? Maybe it's not as basic as they show because I really would think there's gonna be like way more features in this game, essentially. A few friends, two to four of you together for a nail-biting co-op run. Or go it alone in skirmish mode where you'll control three champions. It is time! That's fun. I mean, skirmish mode doesn't seem like it's a campaign, so I wonder if you can only reach the boss fight like with other people, so this is not clear as well. Ah, through a floor, and working together is a must if you hope to survive all the way to the end. The game is turn-based, which means all champions take a turn, spending action points to move, attack, open doors, and so on. You have two action points to spend each turn. That's a very important point, and here you can see like the cards. They have action points cost, so that's fine. I'm assuming those are cards from the sorcerer, so every character is gonna have different kind of cards. Set two actions means whatever you wanna do, like either attack or move. I wonder if you can twice attack? or twice move or is it just move attack like that's essentially more common technique in other RPGs but it's good that we have two actions because then there's more versatility in the gameplay for sure. There are as well numbers on the cards. First one I'm pretty sure is like the base damage or value that you get. Second which later on we will know I think is a critical hit. If you roll that it's gonna pretty much have a stronger effect of anything that you wanna cast whether it's gonna be a stun damage or whatever so okay. And then the enemies do their thing. Attacks and card outcomes are resolved with a die roll. You'll either hit, do a crit, a crit means critical hit. And if you miss, your attack might hit something else nearby. Oh! So this is the part that I'm not totally sure how it's gonna work out. I really have to play it for myself and see how it feels because I'm very much used to the roll system from Dungeon of Dragons. It basically means that whenever you wanna perform an action, you roll a number on your dice. In D&D it's K20, so from 1 to 20 you roll the dice to see what's gonna be the outcome. 1 meaning you completely fail what you are gonna do with some side effects as well and meaning 20 is gonna be either insta-killing someone or just something very unattainable through normal rolls. So what is it? It has six sides on this, so I think this is K12? I'm not sure. This is a check as well, but it's just that it doesn't have numbers, it just have concrete icons that's gonna appear, but it is a check. It is K12. Okay, so I'm assuming one would be miss, and I think 12 is a crit, because I just see one side. Let me see from the others. Wait, there's two crit on the side, so I think this might be two crit and two miss. So something like that. I don't know. But essentially, it's just simplifying the number method and attack check, and I'm pretty sure that's it. So we'll see. In D&D, through statistics, the dice could be modified 
modify it with amplifiers so for example if you would have higher agility i think you would have an additional points to the value that you roll meaning because of your character statistics you could have a higher percentage of hitting something because of that but i think here it's gonna suffice for now i think this is a good way to simplify for anyone that never played any tabletop so i think we're gucci here spells special attacks and other items are all represented by cards so i see the cards of an archer a sorcerer so i think this is specifically for the classes as well but there's a card for a ranged attack what oh this is replenishable because of this icon here so there's gonna be some cards that you will repeat and it's gonna be like your bread and butter in the battlefield but then some unique actions for certain classes okay there are several we've got potions that will heal you up or make you faster or stronger there's a banish spell that'll teleport an enemy to a random spot a barricade that you can use to create bottlenecks or even block off rooms a repeating ballista it'll shoot bolts into the monsters every turn until destroyed a magic shield that'll halve all incoming damage and much much more honestly whoever thought of spell card system in this game is a genius this is essentially what's gonna bring more versatility into gameplay which interests me the most here to see all the cards and how they work because each class is gonna have some unique ones but there are gonna be some cards to use like for everybody common ones that everyone can share so it's not like we have some other classes for now although i hope there's gonna be more in the future i hope we're gonna have more cards as well maybe as our dlcs or something i don't know anything because this is pretty much the most interesting feature to me you'll start with a few cards on hand you can find more in chests spread out across the floors or earn them by defeating enemies and increasing your card meter mm, it's also gold for you to gather i'll be here to greet you in between each floor my bazaar comes fully stocked and at bargain prices too. I love this idea. After completing the floor, you're gonna be able to replenish your supplies for the next floor. So that's a great feature to just like, you know, take a breath and move on. I'm happy to buy any card you don't want. At a reasonable price. Due to some wondrous wizardry, the monsters loot entry and exit points, and even the order of the many different floors is randomized. Every run is a fresh experience. It's up to you to coordinate with your friends on how to beat each floor. Or at least survive it. Reaching the final boss isn't easy, and it's not meant to be. Beating that stinking abomination will earn you plenty of bragging rights. Until someone else does it faster, that is. So, get your friends together, choose your champions, dive in, and above all, have fun! Exciting, really exciting. I'm pretty sure the only thing that I was kind of like meh was the dice, but then I analyze it further and I see the sense of it even though there are no numbers. It makes sense with just combining the cards and criticals and stuff. For some reason it seems more strategy than RPG to me. It really seems like we don't have any statistics, strength, magic, whatever that is. And we just have flat uh, numbers on the cards to fight with, but no modifiers, nothing kind of in this sort. Then not being able to create your own characters and just have some ready to go things. I mean, I really wish in the future we're gonna have some more versatility in that specific thing because it's just fun to create something unique you know for you essentially i think the best memory of that is in the lord of the rings middle of the game you could create some really fun stuff there and it's actually worked because it was just fun to create something from you like from your creativity or for your own preference so maybe in the future who knows resolution games really should have considered it there might be some things to change and fix for it to work but at the end of the day i feel like it's worth it if you want to save the rpg kind of aspect of it all in all i'm confident this game is gonna be fine there's no room to screw this up basically it's essentially gonna be like that the only thing that would ruin this game would be either community or some buggy mess but resolution is not like a company that leaves things unfinished so we'll see tomorrow is the day so that was my two cents and see you there